What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys and today you're going to learn about the relative joint 2D component. The aim of this joint is to maintain a relative linear and angular distance between two points. Those two points can be two rigid body 2D components or a rigid body 2D component and a fixed position in world space. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to create a quad. Click game object, 3D object, quad. Remove the mesh collider from the quad. Add a box collider 2D instead and make a duplicate of the quad. This is going to be our ground. So bring it down here and resize it so that we can use this as ground. Also, so rename the object to ground. Make another duplicate of the quad, call this block and resize this object as well. Make another duplicate of the quad. This will be our player object. So add a rigid body 2D component to it and rename it to player. Also set the gravity scale of the rigid body 2D component to zero. Make a duplicate of the player object, bring it up here and let's call this companion. Delete the quad and disable the companion object for now. Next, select the player game object and add a relative joint 2D component to it. Also add a script, call it move script 06. Open it up in mono develop and now let's add some code to this script. First of all, public float move force x, public float move force y, and private rigid body 2D, our body 2D. And the start method, our body 2D equals get component, rigid body 2D. And in the update method type, float h equals input dot get access raw, horizontal, multiplied by move force x. And float v equals input dot get access raw, vertical, multiplied by move force y. Then, our body 2D dot add force, new vector 2, h on the x axis, and v on the y axis. Save the script, go back to Unity, set move force x to 40 and move force y to 20. And now let's take a look at some of the properties of the relative joint 2D component. First of all, we have linear offset. This is the relative linear offset between the two rigid bodies or more specifically between these two points. The reason why the rigid body is attached to this point right now is because auto configure offset is set to true. If we uncheck auto configure offset, we can move the rigid body around and this point is not going to move with it. So let's set it a little away from this point but don't set it too far away. Now as I mentioned earlier the aim of this joint is to maintain a relative linear and angular distance between two points. These are the two points and the two points can be two rigid body 2D components or a rigid body 2D component and a fixed point in world space. So currently the relative joint 2D is trying to maintain a relative linear and angular distance between this rigid body and this point in world space. Now since the rigid body 2D component is away from this point the relative joint 2D is is going to apply a certain amount of force in order to correct the position of the rigid body 2D component. The correct position would be where this point is. The amount of force that is applied will never exceed max force. Currently max force is set really high. We're going to take this down to let's say 10 and hit play and see what happens. So as you can see, the relative joint 2D applied a certain amount of force in order to correct the positioning of the rigid body 2D component. You must have also noticed that it overshoots a little bit. This happens because of the correction scale, which is right here. The correction scale scales both the linear and angular forces used to correct the required relative orientation. Simply put, the correction scale basically scales the force that is applied to this object in order to get it to this point. The correction scale can only be between 0 and 1. If you set it to 1, it's going to cause the object to overshoot a lot. Let's test this out now. Change the correction scale from 0 0.3 to 1 and hit play. Now as you can see, the object is overshooting each time. And this is going to happen for a couple of seconds more. So I'm going to stop the game now, but you get the point. However, if we set this to 0 0.1 and then play the game, as you can see, the object reached to the point very fast and did not overshoot a lot just a little bit. One point that I forgot to mention is that if auto configure offset is checked, then when you move this object around, this point is going to move around with it. However, if it is unchecked, then you can manually set the offset by changing these values. Check auto configure offset and move the rigid body a little closer and then disable auto configure offset and hit play. Once the game plays, change the angular offset value. As you can see, when you change the angular offset, not only does the position of the rigid body 2D change, but its rotation changes as well. You already know that to maintain the position of the rigid body 2D, a certain amount of force is applied. But to maintain the rotation, a certain amount of torque is applied, and that amount never exceeds max torque. Stop the game, move the rigid body 2D away from its point, and change the angular offset. Now set max torque to 1, change the correction scale to 0.2, and now hit play. Now, not only is there force being applied, but there's also torque being applied in order to correct the position and rotation of the rigid body 2D component. Just like force, the torque is also affected by the correction scale. So let's say we set the correction scale to 0 0.6 and hit play. 
Now it's going to take a much longer time to correct the position and rotation. As you can imagine, this is going to go on for a couple of seconds more, so let's stop the game. All right, set the angular offset back to zero, change the correction scale to 0 0.3, and check auto configure offset. And now bring this object closer to this other point again. Now enable the companion game object, and under the connected rigid body field in the relative joint 2D component, drag and drop the companion game object. So our player's rigid body 2D is now connected to the companion rigid body 2D through the relative joint 2D. Hit play, and now when you move the player object around, you'll see the relative joint 2D is constantly trying to maintain a relative distance between these two objects. Now try to make these two objects collide with each other. You'll notice that they don't. The reason for that is the relative joint 2D gives you the option to enable collision. So you get to choose whether these two rigid bodies can collide with each other or not. So if you check enable collision and play the game, now the two rigid bodies will collide with each other. Next, we have break force. Now, you already know that the relative joint 2D applies a certain amount of force in order to maintain a relative linear distance. This force is known as reaction force, and it is a vector 2. Each physics update, the break force is compared to the magnitude of the reaction force. And if the magnitude of the reaction force exceeds the break force, then the joint will break. Now, before we test this out, let's make some changes in our script. Add public float reaction force magnitude and public float reaction torque. We'll look into this a little later. In the update method type reaction force magnitude equals get component relative joint 2d dot reaction force dot magnitude and next reaction torque equals get component relative joint 2d dot reaction torque. Hit save, go back to unity. The break force is currently set to infinity meaning no matter how big the reaction force is the joint is not going to break. Let's change our max force to let's say 100 and change the break force to 50. And now let's play the game. First of all, move the player around a little bit and notice the change in the reaction force magnitude. And now from a little far distance, we are going to collide with this block. As you can see, the joint broke. The reason the joint broke is because the reaction force magnitude exceeded the break force. If we set this to, let's say, 101. If you remember, earlier I had mentioned that the amount of force used to correct the positioning of the rigid body 2D cannot exceed max force. Since we have set break force to 101 and the max force is 100, the force is never going to exceed 100 and so the joint is not going to break. Let's set this back to infinity. Next, let's take a look at break torque. Now, just like reaction force, there's reaction torque. Reaction torque is the torque that is applied to correct the rigid body 2D's rotation, and the reaction torque can never exceed max torque. Now, each physics update, the break torque is compared to the reaction torque, and if the reaction torque exceeds the break torque, then the joint will break. Let's test this out. Set the max torque to 0.5, change the correction scale to 0.1, and leave the break torque at infinity and now let's play the game and watch what happens when this player object starts rotating i'm going to do that by hitting this corner of the player object to this corner of the block so as you can see a certain amount of torque is being applied over here and that torque is being measured in our script. Now let's set the break torque to let's say 0 0.3, hit play. And now when the player object starts rotating, at some point the joint is going to break. That point is basically when the reaction torque exceeds the break torque. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.